It's been a while since I covered a retro game and with Jojo All-Star Battle R and the second season of Stone Ocean right around the corner, I think it's time for me to talk about Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Phantom Bloods PlayStation 2 Adaptation. Hello everyone, I'm Arcade Knot here and today I'm gonna introduce you a bizarre boss rush game that is made around 6 years before its anime release. Yes, baby! Hey baby! First of all, it's best to keep in mind that Phantom Blood PlayStation 2 adaptation is released only in Japan in 2006 and if you wanna give it a try, there is also an unofficial English patch for it. The cover is created by the series creator Araki Hirohiko himself, so you can see a part 7 style drone, Jonathan Joestar and Dio Brando on its cover, exclusively made for this game. And again, since it's released in 2006, that means all of the scenes, from cutscenes to even battles, can only be referenced and influenced from the original manga. And need to say that, besides the voice actor choices for both Jonathan and Dio, all of the iconic scenes quite resemble the anime production that was released back in 2012. Phantom Blood does really a good job by showing the important events of Phantom Blood's story, from the first scenes and the introduction of Dio Brando, the very last scene of Phantom Blood. If you are a Jojo fan and want to refresh your memories of Phantom Blood, it could be a bizarre adventure alright. But first things first, what is Jojo? Our story takes place in late 19th century. A wealthy gentleman called George Joestar adopts a young boy called Dio Brando to repay a family debt to Dio's father. George's son Jonathan on the other hand really tries his best to be the best gentleman ever lived representing his family. But the bizarre adventure starts with Dio arriving at Joestar Mansion as he manipulates Jonathan as part of his plot to take the very own Joestar fortune for himself, cursing his very own existence. Until now it might sound like a typical drama but soon this whole adventure will be filled with zombies, vampires and two bizarre dudes fighting against this darkness while sucking lots of air and using energies. Yes, Jojo did the whole air suction moves before Kimetsu no Yaiba. From Jonathan's first fight against the bullies to protect his love interest Arena, to Jonathan and Dio's boxing match, his first meeting with Speedwagon when he was just a thug, to even zombie policemen. Phantom Blood presents the whole story with characters talking with each other, polygonal animated cutscenes and then a battle in which you control either Jonathan and sometimes his mentor Zeppeli. But something is off. Right from the start even the British bullies hit like a truck and control feels extremely rough and hard to learn. Right from the first chapter to nearly half of the game where Jonathan learns his air suction special moves called Hamon from his mentor Zeppeli, I was waiting for an upgrade or a character customization option which will let me upgrade Jonathan's either health or attack or defense. And the reason for that is, by each chapter, depending on your performance, you receive a grade. And by receiving a grade, you also receive points. You might wonder, what will I use these points for? Well, my friend, these points are for nothing. I believe that these will be experience points that I would upgrade Jonathan at some point but no. By each chapter depending on the story progress and Jonathan's moves and abilities depending on the original manga, your move list changes but nothing more. If those bullies wreck you, try harder my friend. If you cannot pass a boss fight, which is like 90% of the game, then you gotta learn all of the moves Jonathan has, try harder or cheese if you have to. And trust me, there are lots of boss fights with gimmicks so it's not just a square square triangle kind of beat em up experience. For example at some point in order to defeat your lovely brother Dio, you need to knock him down to the fire to weaken him and can only deal damage while he is burning alive. All of those gimmicks are indeed interesting as a gameplay choice but I would prefer at least a healing item or something that would make the whole experience a bit more enjoyable rather than a hardcore boss rush kind of mode. Trust me, even the bullies will wreck you and knock you down from one place to another due to lack of smooth gameplay and lock on future, which makes the whole thing even harder. Whole Phantom Blood experience takes around 5 to 6 hours with 25 different battles and around the halfway, Jonathan's gameplay mechanics become more interesting and solid as you begin to use Hamon. This Hamon lets its user to make itself stronger by sucking air and posing of course. 
so you need to make use of that. By each punch move you need to do Hamon and Pose to buff Jonathan's passive abilities. For example if you press punch and then do Hamon, Jonathan will do self heal over time. If you do 2 punches and then do Hamon, its attack will increase. 3 punches will be defense, 4 will be Jonathan's speed and the percentage of these buffs increase and also their duration extends by each time you do Hamon. All of these mechanics clicked me by a rough boss fight as I had no other choice to buff myself by doing Hamon over and over and over and over again and each Hamon buff has a different pose that Jonathan does, once again quite faithful to its original manga and Araki's works. I wish this Hamon mechanic had more depth to it as it made the game quite unique. As I mentioned before, Phantom Blood covers everything and will refresh your memory at some point. The story is handled with illustrations from the original manga, sometimes with polygonal made cutscenes to increase its effectiveness. You will feel like as if you rewatched the whole first season from the scratch. Whole adaptation is so faithful to original work, it is quite amazing and keep that in mind again that it is released also before the television series. And this faithfulness can also seen by the boss fights which can make everything at some point quite frustrating if you want to play fair and square. Especially the underwater battle chapter against Brufort was full of gimmicks as Jonathan can beat the boss only by doing a special Hamon move that you need to charge and need to reach the air bubbles that appear from the rocks underwater. But seriously that boss fight was quite frustrating. To be frank I was expecting Phantom Blood to be more like a beat em up filled with filler enemies, contents and boss fights and even with story content made by developers. Each mission has an objective, has a timer because no one wants to wait you for it, a limited arena which you cannot run away forever and that's it. It's just you against the boss or the objective that you need to complete with no healing items whatsoever. But then again if this game is more like boss rush game then why it doesn't have a lock on future that would help me to defend and do combos right? <sighs> what can I say, maybe I'm expecting a lot from a playstation 2 era game but when compared to other anime title games, Phantom Blood still ends up faithfully bizarre. But on the other hand, I remember Full Metal Alchemist PlayStation 2 games had more like a traditional beat em up approach and I remember them as an overall fun experience. Maybe, needless to say, I will also cover them in the future but before either Jojo All Star Battle R or the second season of Stone Ocean, I would also like to take a look at PlayStation 2 Golden Wind adaptation which is released even 4 years before the Phantom Blood. I tend to get this feeling that it would be even more bizarre adventure than Phantom Blood. ゾンビになるからな。回転。手が、手が燃えている。お袋に火をつけた。<笑> 